Hello, it's Kara. Welcome back to Celadon Glazing. We're on part three. Um, so we have two coats. They're pretty dry. And I told you guys that if you're having trouble, you know, if you're having a spot where the glaze isn't getting in, that I do have a trick for that. So I'm going to show you very quickly. I have a little clean water. So I'm going to just get it wet. Let's see. I don't have as many tools as I usually do since I'm not at my normal glazing station. You can either try to push it in there, or another way is to water down a little bit of glaze and float it in. But just use a wet brush and see little air bubbles rising to the surface. So that is one way. Um, if they're really problematic, I have sometimes um, re-fired them and I'll mix a little bit of the glaze with a lot of water to float it into the hole and just kind of work it in there. What is What usually these are from is because the holes are too small for the glaze to sink into that texture. So this is my third coat. So when I'm glazing, if I have coats and I need to let them dry. I know it's problematic, you know, it's difficult to, uh, ha you know, wait. So what I do is I just have things set up so that I have other projects going on. So for example, between the 1130 and 1230 segments, I went and threw uh, a half a dozen bowls. And Sometimes I'll go and glaze something else. If I have a lot of glazing to do, that works really well. Or I do other projects. So that way I'm not spending all my time staring at a pot waiting for the glaze to dry. So we had the question, and I'm sorry I didn't write down the name uh, of the person asking, about mixing celadon glazes to replicate colors, I recommend, um, we recommend, that you measure volumetrically rather than by weight. Since the glaze already has water added to it, it's tricky. You can measure by weight. Um, that certainly will work if you like, but I find that it works just fine to do the volumetric method mixing method. If you go to the Celadon webpage, which is on our Amico website, amico.com, A-M-A-C-O dot C-O-M, and go to the Celadon page, you will see a section where we actually show some examples of mixing um, with different Celadons. And those were all done by volume, so usually I use like a, uh, a measuring cup like this. I'll pour the glaze in, just pour it into the cup, and level it off, and then put it into another container to mix it. And there are some beautiful combinations <clears throat> on the uh, website, but I do encourage you to try your own. There are some, uh, some great combinations that I've found over the years. Um, one of my favorites is, is two parts of uh, lavender to one part weeping plum. Gets you a really beautiful purplish pinkish color. So that's it for my coats. I did want to talk about some other things with the celadons. For example, here I need to move this out of my way. Um, so, 
The celadons are formulated to be fired to cone 5 or cone 6, and some of the colors will fade if you go above cone 6. Um, two of the colors will change and fade at cone 6. So for example, lavender starts to turn blue at cone 6, right there. That's the lavender at cone 6. This is the lavender at cone 7. You can see how it becomes much more blue. And then this is the lavender at cone 10. The glaze is pretty solid, but it is definitely not lavender anymore. More of a periwinkle. This one's kind of not, not also, also not surprising. This is the cherry blossom that I showed you on the platter in part two. This is at cone six. This is at cone seven. So a lot of times if, if you're having a problem where your cherry blossom is not coming out pink, it may be over firing, especially if you're using a, a particularly long hold. Um, as I said in last week's um, live video on ancient copper, if you're using a, a hold longer than 10 minutes, you may be pushing up into the next cone range. The amount of heat work, which is temperature and time, not just temperature, means that you're actually pushing up to a cone 7. So that's what you would end up with if you're going too hot. And then that's cone 10. So you can see it completely lost all of its pink. So most of the colors come out the same. The last one I'm going to show you that does not is aqua. Looks great at cone 6. Starts to shift a little greenish at cone 7. And at cone 10 is totally green. However, as I was saying, most of the colors don't really change much. So, for example, this is C29, this is deep C, and that's at cone 6, that's at cone 7, and that's at cone 10. It just becomes a really, really rich, almost cobalt blue. It loses some of the, the warmer tones in the glaze. So. The celadons are sensitive to heat, but most of them will fire just fine at cone 6. That's an example of those. And then the last thing I wanted to show you with the celadons is this is one of our label tiles. So when you look at a jar of celadon, you can see a pattern on it, and that pattern is one of these. And if you're thinking, well, there's like a little flower in the middle. Yes, there is. That's where it comes from. So these little circle tiles just go right in the middle of the label tile. Now the label tile, as you can see, as I change the angle and you can see it with the light a little bit, we have water etching, we have a little bit of carving, we even have a tiny bit, it's very, very subtle, bit of slip trailing, little tiny polka dots, uh, more carving, so that you have different textures on the celadon tile so that you can see what it looks like with very, very subtle texture as well as, as not so subtle texture. So that is how the, how the celadon tiles were developed to showcase their, their texture. So, um, I think that that wraps up all of the things I wanted to show everybody about the celadons. And I'm going to just do one last show of the, of the uh, jar. And I have to move this again. Let's see, is there a dry spot? There is. Dry enough. So we have these jars were made by Ariel Day, who is our videographer and ceramic artist. And these were for the, the celadons a few years ago when Glacier came out. So we could showcase all the different ways that you can use the celadon glazes. Aren't they beautiful? So if you have other questions, just let me know.
I'll be back next week. I'm not sure yet what we're going to talk about, but uh, if you have questions or suggestions for the live glazing video, let me know. Just drop them in the comments, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.